Hello, I'm Eric Snodgrass, and thank you for watching today's Ag Forecast brought to you by Nutrient Ag Solutions, your premier platform for real-time global insights. Well, on the anniversary here of Hurricane Katrina's landfall in New Orleans back in 2005, we are watching another quite powerful tropical cyclone. This is Dorian. This was late last night from the San Juan radar out of Puerto Rico. And you probably notice here that Dorian has a bit of a different trajectory than we had talked about earlier this week. A model guidance early in the week had the storm system heading over toward the island of Hispaniola, but since then, it has taken a hard right turn into a much more favorable environment. We can see a pretty well-defined eye. In fact, some great-looking feeder bands coming into this system, uh, really helping to strengthen it here. And that favorable environment that is in is going to give Dorian quite the potential to become a powerful tropical cyclone and possibly be making landfall in the United States. The European Ensemble last night, well, let's just follow the Ensemble average, takes this system right here towards Central Florida before turning it to the north. Uh, running there along the coast of parts of Georgia, uh, South and North Carolina. And it does have the potential to strengthen quite a bit. The sea surface temperatures in this area are quite warm and the wind shear environment is actually quite favorable as well. Uh, so it appears as though our model guidance is suggesting a major hurricane making landfall. And that is currently what the National Hurricane Center is picking up on. Potentially the outer rain bands of this system could be hitting Florida, uh, you know, some point in the day on Sunday. But the M denotes here in the center of the forecast cone by the National Hurricane Center indicates that they're anticipating this becoming a major hurricane. That means getting a cat category three strength on the Sapphire Simpson scale or higher. Uh, my greatest fear with this system is that yes, as it does make landfall at, at, at full strength here, that as it slowly makes its turn like this, it could potentially slow down uh, because the steering winds around this are not going to be that strong, which could make it uh, a slow moving hurricane. It is most certainly moving into a favorable environment. Uh, Post tropical cyclone Aaron, which was here, you see it there, really helped to moisten the environment in this area. Area. And Dorian is avoiding the drier air here and is expected to come into that much more favorable environment with time in terms of moisture content. And uh, that's what's going to help really uh, keep Dorian on the stronger side of things. Before I transition off of this image, I just want you to notice we do have quite a bit of active convection here that is coming off of the west coast of Africa. So we need to keep a very close eye on the tropics in the coming days. What will be steering Dorian? Well, by the time we get into Saturday morning, Dorian's main circulation is sitting right in through here. The subtropical high that is to the north and east uh, does appear to have this kind of elongated flow in that clockwise fashion like this, whereas the upper level low sitting over the island of Cuba appears to be taking the storm system steering wind, something like that, which means Dorian's probably going to skirt in between the two and head over here to the Florida coast before getting turned uh, in this direction after making landfall. That's our latest guidance at this point. Certainly a lot of, of uncertainty out this far, uh, but we're at least trying to get our best picture at this point. Now, my biggest concern with this the whole time is, yes, it's going to be a powerful system, but if it slows down, we do have the potential for putting down quite a bit of precipitation. You can see here by looking at the National Blended Model, which puts together the best global models, including the European and the GFS, are picking up on a wide section of the cotton and peanut belt down there in parts of South Carolina, Georgia, and Florida that have the potential for picking up 6 to 10 plus inches of rainfall. And that is going to be the problem if Dorian slows down. Now, meanwhile, as we look elsewhere around the country, here we're looking out over the next nine days, so this takes us all the way out uh, to September the 6th, we see that there is going to be an active region in the country right in through here that has multiple chances for storms over the coming days. We do notice there's a drier pocket in through this area, and it is not to say there won't be any precipitation in that area, but our blend of models here is picking up on that corridor being dry. So we need to talk about the next few systems moving through the United States here and see how and when they put down their precipitation. So the last 48 hours kind of gives us a clue. We've seen a low pressure system skirting along the US Canada border and its front draped down like this. And that has brought some much needed rain into parts of Texas and in parts of Oklahoma and really scattered throughout much of the cotton belt right in through here. Why these scattered showers and thunderstorms? The front did clear things out, bringing in some nice clear skies and some cooler conditions, some windy conditions here. But we will be watching that same quarter that's been nice and cool today for the potential for strong to severe thunderstorms. So let's take a look at what we're talking about there. Storm Prediction Center has this outlook for us uh, here in the day on Thursday. So 
stretching from parts of Michigan in through parts of Illinois, Wisconsin, over into Iowa, Missouri, and then into Kansas and Nebraska. This is going to be the corridor on which we're going to watch for the storms to kind of light up and press to the south with time, potentially impacting this area in the overnight hours tonight and into Friday morning. So if we watch our high resolution model here, this is the NAM model. I want to take you out to midday on Thursday. What do we notice? Well, in the Pacific Northwest, you can see widely scattered showers and storms. These are kind of moving around a broader ridge sitting in this area. But it's the frontal boundary stretched right in through this corridor. See it through Michigan coming through parts of Lake Michigan into the Wisconsin Illinois border. That frontal boundary is wrapped up into the slow moving through Ontario. We see that by four o'clock this afternoon, we're gonna watch the radar very carefully in this corridor. So getting you through the afternoon and evening hours, you can see this frontal squall line stretched right here across the midsection of the United States. It looks as though it's gonna press in the overnight hours through central Indiana, getting into central Illinois over toward northern Missouri. So we're in the afternoon, the evening hours, overnight hours here, pressing farther to the south. Now where this system goes once it gets into the overnight hours will be quite tricky to forecast. It'll most certainly become an elevated uh, storm system. What I mean by that is that it'll sit on top of the boundary layer and press to the south, which means we're gonna have to now cast our way through the overnight hours to see where this squall line eventually progresses. What I don't like to see is that it's hitting an area in Kansas and Missouri that has just been pounded over the last several weeks with incredibly heavy rainfall, a lot of flooding in that area. Early Friday morning, pressing farther to the south here, getting into possibly parts of Arkansas, uh, Oklahoma, and Texas. So you can see that by Friday afternoon, we're going to see the remnants of that system moving uh, out into Texas. Now, at this point, we're going to watch the central plains again for more showers and storms. And to do that, I want to switch now over to a new index we've created, our thunderstorm index here uh, from uh, uh, Nutrient Ag Solutions. So what this is painting for us is a picture of where the environment is favorable for thunderstorms. So you can see here, this is now Thursday afternoon evening where that environment is really well defined here in the afternoon overnight hours. So that's right along that funnel boundary fed on moisture coming out of the Gulf of Mexico. Well, that passes through. And what do we notice is that on Friday, we could have a quarter right in through here of some more active showers and thunderstorms. When is the next big system pressing through? Well, could see widely scattered storms on a boundary here on Sunday, sitting in through this area. But we do notice that the environment is helping to start to moisten up and destabilize in the north central plains out ahead of our next system coming through on monday into tuesday right in through there see it so we're going to watch that very carefully monday into tuesday to develop another frontal battery on which storms could come over that same area so that gets us out there pretty far into next week uh, as we're looking out uh, at our thunderstorm index so what does our modeling system say about this well, let's play this out and take a close look Thursday, again, this area in through here lighting up with the showers and thunderstorms. We can see that as we progress through the overnight hours, they move toward the south there, such that by early Friday morning, it'll be this corridor that we're going to see in the overnight hours on, on, on um, excuse me, Thursday, get into Friday morning for the heaviest rainfall. So that pushes to the south there. Now, at this particular point, we're going to watch out on Saturday for widely scattered showers and storms through uh, the, the central plains here in the overnight hours Friday, but Saturday morning right in through that area. And throughout the day on Saturday, there could be a weak boundary hanging out right in through here on which more showers and storms form, but it's going to be largely hit or miss. At this point, Dorian is now knocking on the door here of Florida. You can see its main circulation at this point, possibly a category three strength hurricane or stronger. So now let's get through Saturday evening into the overnight hours on Saturday, getting into Sunday morning. Now on Sunday morning, what I want to be watching out for here, getting a Sunday morning to afternoon is a boundary sitting from New York stretched right in through parts of Illinois, right in through here. And that could be bringing some scattered showers and storms as Dorian's, you can really well see it here, comes into Florida. In the North Central Plains, you can see that we do have widely scattered showers and storms from North Dakota through Minnesota. But remember, our next system is taking shape at this point in the Central Plains. So as Dorian gets on shore here on Sunday, getting into Monday morning, we're gonna watch Monday for the development of a system in the North Central Plains. And there it is, see the low? That particular low is the next one that by Tuesday morning, 
Tuesday afternoon, Tuesday evening, could skirt through the uh, Great Lakes states and leave a frontal boundary right in through here. And that's where our thunderstorm index picked up on the next chance for some stronger thunderstorms in through this corridor. Now, taking you out much beyond next Tuesday evening is not wise with the model runs because we don't yet fully know the interaction between Dorian, which you can clearly see are producing some very heavy rainfall in through parts of Georgia and South Carolina. We don't see where it's going beyond that. So I'm going to stop it here with our operational models and just tell you, getting beyond middle of the week next week, there's a lot of uncertainty, okay? What are we looking at in the upper levels of the atmosphere? Well, this important forecast discussion here on temperatures as we animate this forward. What we notice building out through the end of the week and weekend is a broader ridge out here in the western United States. Trough sneaks into the northwest, cooling things down there, but quite warm here in this quarter of the country. Moving forward, we will see this by we get out to uh, time we get out to the third and the fourth, fifth, and sixth. What am I seeing? We keep seeing the broader trough sweeping through the Canadian prairies and staying in the Hudson Bay, but our ridge builds out west, keeping the heat on. But watch what happens to that ridge as we get out to the eighth, ninth, and tenth. You see, it appears that by the time we get into that second week of September, that overall we start to bring in maybe some broader ridging in through this area. So as we look out to that, you know, 6 to 10 to 15 day forecast, what this is doing is this is helping to moderate temperatures in the central part of the United States as a broader trough moves into the west. Now, the interpretation of that is this in terms of temperatures. In the near terms, let's just take a look at minimum temperatures in the morning, because I know that a lot of folks are quite concerned about this potential for an early frost. Well, as we play, this is going to go quite fast here. Let me take you back and show you each day. So this is Thursday morning lows, primarily in the 50s, except for in the Great Lakes states, we see there's some 40s. Let's take you now into Friday. At this point, we could get some 40 degree temperatures, uh, mid to upper 40s through parts of the northern plains over toward northern Wisconsin. So that's a pretty brisk morning. But take a look. By the time we get into Saturday, we do get some moderation in the central plains with lows there potentially around the 50 degree mark with the cooler weather in the Great Lakes states. But then we really moderate Sunday and into Monday and Tuesday. And again, these are morning low temperatures, okay? Morning low temperatures, not afternoon highs. And overall, we see that we're not really flirting with those upper 30s, which would get us concerned over the coming days here. And now we're out to the 7th and 8th of the uh, of September. So yes, overnight lows, you know, here in the 40s, but we're not seeing these freezing temperatures yet. Okay, that's a very important forecast. More broadly speaking, over the next five days, as the ridge really builds out west, we do have the cooler bias here. But I talked about some moderation and take a look at this in the six to 10 day forecast. As that ridge begins to spread, we do start to see some warmer conditions returning here. While the cooler weather really tries to stay up here between the Hudson Bay and the Great Lakes states. So this is only a couple of degrees cooler than average on the whole here in the north central part of the United States, which is good. We, we want to see that we need heat in that area. Taking out to the 11 to 15 day forecast, I do believe that the GFS ensemble has a bit of a cool bias uh, in through this area. So what I'm seeing here is a little bit closer to normal temperatures across this whole corridor of the United States with the cooler weather really tucked into this area. Now we still do have cooler temperatures that are hanging out here. That's not gone away, which means if the pattern becomes highly amplified and takes those temperatures down, yes, we could be bringing in that potential uh, for a frost. But this isn't anytime soon. This is not anytime soon. But this does still mean we are not playing the catch up we need with our heat units at this point. OK, to finish up, I want to give you some global perspective here. I got a great question the other day about this vegetation health index map, and I'm showing you the year on year change. And a lot of folks were saying, wow, look at the, the change towards positive values here in the Corn Belt. And I said, well, of course, because remember, this is this year against last year. In the end of August a year ago, the crop was done. And uh, we, we made up, remember, we made up a lot of time with heat last year and the crop was done. It was starting to dry out. So, of course, it looks better now. It's much more green now than it was, you know, back a year ago. But I want to take you outside of that. I want to right now go to Brazil. A lot of the fire activity we've been talking about, well, it is very, very dry in this corridor. In fact, if I show you how dry it is compared to normal, we've seen that since June, they have had a major precipitation deficit, almost no precipitation throughout this 
section of Brazil. And as a consequence, it's just like the Western United States. It's fire season, and we have seen a lot of fires in that area. So I want to make sure you understand that there is a drought going on in that area as well. Europe, the heat that is right now uh, here is going to be pressing to the east, but I really want to focus on what's going on over in China. So let's take a look at this. Now, our two main growing regions in China for corn and soybeans are going to be here and here, north of the Korean Peninsula and then south of Beijing. Overall, we see less healthy conditions in the southern, uh, this southern growing region versus the northern growing region here. We've had a lot more rainfall in this area. But take a look at what's going on here in the Shandong province. So this is the southern growing region right in through this corridor. What I want to show you here is that they have been building up a pretty substantial deficit in precipitation until a typhoon came came through. We talked about this back in uh, early August, which brought in a whole bunch of rain, but since then they flattened out again. So this is a region of stress on a, a very a big growing area in China. Uh, so I'm expecting there to continue to be stress in that area as they've been quite dry and our forecast remains so. So I want to give you that overall perspective on the globe, but with that, I think I'll go ahead and wrap up this forecast video right here. We Nutrient Ag Solutions, thank you for your attention. Please, if you're in the Southeast United States, keep a close eye in the coming days on nhc.noaa.gov. That'll give you the best information about the track of Dorian. But with that, I hope you all have a great end to your week and weekend, and we'll talk to you again soon. Thank you.